there's no limit to what robots could potentially do, right? There could be robots in space, there can be robots in medicine. Robotics is such an interesting field of study. Um, can you tell me how you got into it and what makes you so passionate about it? As a teenager, I always thought medicine is my way to go, but then I loved Star Trek and I had computer science club at school and so I was like, maybe I don't do something with robotics. So I went into computer science, did everything I could to learn more about robots. And it was actually uh, one of the good things because I felt like I could combine these two. I could build robots that could help surgeons to do their job better. Actually, we are rethinking embodiments of robots. Um, so we are not building robots that look like humans or resemble like the anatomy of a human arm doing jobs, but the robots that we are building are kind of surpassing this. Like we are thinking about animals as an inspiration. Think of a worm or of a snake. So they are really small and slender and they can sneak around, reach places hard to reach, and they can do things all these other robots can't do. Can you talk a little bit about the value that the, your research is, is bringing to the healthcare industry? So surgical robotics does a lot for good things for patients in terms of it can help surgeons revolutionize the way they think about how they approach a disease or how they approach a surgical site. For example, think about this deep-seated tumor within the brain. You could open the skull invasively and try to get to it. So think about this, like when a neurosurgeon uh, looks at a human skull and wants to access the brain right, and to remove a tumor, they will need to open it essentially. And the tools they have are sometimes 100 years old. This is just tweezers we, look, uh, we use at the lab. But surgical instruments look similar, right? They are like straight, long, may have some like tool at the tip. And so you, they, they start thinking about, how hey, can I use this tool to do this? And now in our lab, we are building these robots that are now curvilinear, very small, and they could, you know, reach this tumor through a tiny burr hole and sneak around. And this could potentially revolutionize how surgeons think about the way they approach this tumor with the tools they had before. Because now they got this robot that could do something in a very different way. And so we are working on these embodiments of these robots. That's the more mechanical side of our work. But as I'm also a computer scientist, a lot of my students are computer scientists. So we are also looking at, for example, how can we plan the motions of these robots effectively? Or how can we create an effective way of human-robot interaction? How can the human be in the loop? The university obviously is known for um, growing the next generation of, you know, researchers, professors. So can you talk a little bit about um, building the pipeline? We want to build the next generation of robotics leaders. And these are ultimately these people that you see here. It's not us, right? And so it's um, empowering them to talk about robots, to um, build robots, to think about robots. Right now, I'm working under Professor Jessica Burger Cars at the Continuum Robotics Laboratory. Continuum robots, if we can get them working well and engineer them well and design them well for certain applications, they can really change how we look at work. So what excites you about robotics? I guess right now I'm just really thinking about what the dream is. I'm really excited because it's just kind of reimagining what the world will be after this generation of roboticists produce something in the world. I really like interdisciplinary work where we're drawing ideas from different fields, collaborating with amazing researchers uh, across U of T, maybe not just in robotics, maybe um, in engineering, maybe in computer science. And I think really in this way of thinking about research and problem solving, we can really find some really unique solutions that can impact continuum robotics and have downstream effects for whatever applications they end up. And I really want to be in this space. What comes to mind when you think about robots? Is it cars? So we're at the Institute for Aerospace Studies. It's such a cool space and you know I can't wait to hear a little bit more about these autonomous vehicles. But tell me about where it started. Where did your passion come from to study research in robotics? I've been working on robotics since I started doing any kind of research all the way back in my undergrad. And I'm in the aerospace department because uh, I started on drones actually, working on multi-rotor vehicles flying in the air, trying to keep themselves uh, positioned properly. And that slowly evolved over time into self-driving where not only are we trying to control the vehicles, but also handle all of the dynamic and interesting things that happen in the human world. You joined U of T in 2018. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the exciting projects that you've been able to work on? So I moved in 2018 from the University of Waterloo to Toronto. And part of the reason was this car you see here. We had a really dynamic and exciting team building self-driving vehicles here already. Uh, and I had just spent the last five years building my own version of this, the Autonomous. Since then, here at the university, I've been uh, trying to push these vehicles further into 
to difficult conditions. We've actually launched this new program called WinTOR, which is going to focus our self-driving research on the Winter Autonomous Challenge. So dealing with sensor information that's degraded, you know, that really uh, difficult snowstorm that you don't want to be driving in. No. Can we actually solve that in a way and make all Canadians safer? That's what the WinTOR project is going to be about. What are you looking for when you're, you're testing? What we're looking for is increases in performance that allow us to get to human level capabilities. So I'll give you some examples from my work. Um, I work on multiple aspects of perception where we take the LiDAR data, which is sort of generates 3D point crowds around the vehicle with accurate depth information, and the camera data, which everyone knows, uh, and we try to identify all the pedestrians, cyclists, and vehicles that are around the, the car and may end up being uh, influential in the you make your decisions. So really I'm at the very front of the pipeline, taking that sensor data in and converting it into an understanding of the scene around the car. Um, and so when we do our testing, there's a lot going on. Essentially, uh, we're trying to evaluate how many of the vehicles and pedestrians and cyclists we detect correctly, how far away we can detect them, and how precisely we can position them in 3D. And if we can do all of those things reliably, we can then propagate that information over time and really start to make accurate predictions about where things are going and what's going to happen over the next five to ten second decision horizon. I think what's exciting about autonomous vehicles is they're opening the door to robotic systems operating in a human world, right? We're learning to track and to predict what humans are doing either in their vehicles or on the streets and, and figuring out how to make decisions about the right next action for a robot when human safety is involved. There seems to be a lot of top tier talent in robotics and AI in Toronto and our profile has just grown tremendously. Can you talk about that shift? I think it's actually always been here, but the um, amazing breakthroughs in AI, you know, started with Jeffrey Hinton and the like here at the university, um, have really sort of exposed the world to the great stuff going on in Canada. So you're a second year master's student, you know, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about what got you excited about getting into robotics and specifically working on self-driving cars? Uh, fun fact, when I was a kid, I am quite into uh, RC racing uh, and I have been playing with cars a lot and uh, I sort of stopped doing uh, car related stuff and into robotics and computer science for a bit. But once I heard U of T have this uh, auto drive uh, competition and autonomous vehicle uh, in progress, it, it just clicked and uh, I, I spent quite a bit of time on this and it, it becomes like emotionally uh, connected to the car. You know, I think I'm building part of the future, hopefully, <laughs> with a bunch of undergrad and grad students. And, uh, you know, I, I think one day we'll reach the um, ideal world where the, the ma majority of the cars on the road will be autonomous. And uh, I think um, we're taking the right path to building a brighter and greater future.